Draw boundaries, draw lines in the sand that are gonna keep you structured, that are gonna keep you focused. Because if you just go and go and go, you are gonna burn out, you are gonna feel exhaustion, you are not gonna be able to put in 100%. That I promise you. An entrepreneur straight out of New York City, Michael Chernow was cracking. What up, everybody? Welcome back to the Creatures of Habit podcast. I got to say, Happy New Year. If I haven't said it already, Happy New Year. We are in the new year, and it's funny. I'm an authentic, real guy, and I'm not recording this in the new year. I'm actually recording this in December, approaching the new year, but you're listening to this in the new year, and so I thought it was appropriate to do a solo cast on something that could arguably need be what you need to hear today to kick off your new year in the right direction. And that is boundaries, my friends. Boundaries. I want to talk about boundaries today. When I was coming down here from upstate, I was thinking about boundaries and I was thinking about how challenging it was for me coming up as a business person and setting boundaries, especially as a father and a husband. It's very, very, it's very, very difficult to understand as you're learning how to separate business life and family life, if, if, you, if you have, you know, if you're in a marriage or if you're in a relationship and you're trying to do business at the same time. Similarly, I spent, as you guys know my story, most likely at this point by now, I spent so long living a boundaryless life. I spent 11 years of my life in active addiction and there was no boundaries, zero nothing. Nothing stopped me from doing anything I wanted to do and not in a great way. I have lived on both sides of the habit coin, as you all know, and my habits nearly killed me when I was in my early 20s. And now my habits have made me the man I am today. That doesn't mean that I learned how to create boundaries right away. It took years. It took years and years. You know, the way I kind of think about it is like this. Imagine looking to buy a piece of real estate. Imagine looking to buy a home and you met with a real estate broker and you said, okay, so how big is the property? And the real estate broker said, we don't know. There's no bound, there's no property line. And you would say to the real estate broker, well, like, how do I know what's mine and what's not? And the broker would say, I'm not sure. It wouldn't feel good buying that piece of property, right? Property has boundary lines. Property has property lines. It keeps things somewhat certain. It gives you an idea as to how far you can build or not. Imagine a football game with no outlines or a basketball game with no foul line. Imagine a restaurant that didn't have an open or closed time. Boundaries. Sets the tone. Not only for you, but for the people in your direct vicinity. If you don't set boundaries, you are like that person that is trying to play a game of football with no outlines. There's nowhere, you don't know where to stop or start. And so I began drawing boundaries about three years into the meatball shop where, and this, I'll, I'll start with my business. So I'm trying to give you guys some, some real tangible, viable tools that you can implement. We opened up the meatball shop and it was my first business. It was Daniel's actually second business. It was my first business. And all I thought about being a business owner and a founder was work means all the time. Like my life was work when I created the meatball shop. There was really very little time, if any at all, for anything else. And luckily I had a very supportive wife who saw what I was doing and, and had a lot of patience with me in that time, but the truth is, is that it was very unhealthy. I worked 18 hours a day, seven days a week. I never took a vacation for the first two years. I never took a day off. And I remember very clearly my wife sort of looking at me at about two and a half years in. I'd had a few days off, of course, at that point, but for the first 18 to 24 months, really, there was very few of any days off. I actually, I remember the first day off or when Daniel and I felt comfortable enough with both of us leaving the restaurant at the same time. It was about 18 months in. There was never a moment in time when that restaurant was open that he or I or both of us were, were not there. And 
we looked at each other. It was like 10.30 at night. It was kind of slow. And we said, all right, let's walk up to the cigar bar on 7th Street and see what happens and have a cigar and then come on back. And that was the first time that we both left, left the restaurant. I remember it was like, like it was yesterday. But there was a moment in time about two and a half years there where my wife basically took me aside and said, hey, I don't know you. I haven't seen you or hung out with you or been intimate with you in over two years. And that doesn't mean that we didn't have sex. That means that like I was out to lunch. I was, I was completely consumed by the business. She said, this is not sustainable. I can't live like this. This is not something I'm signed up for. And I was like, you're absolutely right. This is totally unhealthy. And we need to, I, need, I not we, I need to figure out a solution. So we basically decided that we were going to get out of the city on the weekends. And that meant that I had to not work on the weekends. And that is the busiest time in the restaurant business. So that meant I had to make a bold, take a bold action and say to my business partner, Dan, hey man, I'm not gonna work on Friday nights and Saturday nights anymore. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go upstate on the weekends. We're gonna rent a little place with some friends and we're gonna go up there on the weekends so I can get back to my marriage. You know, it's, I've, I've neglected it and, and I'm on the verge of, of, of it not working out. And that was, a, that was like, I was obviously very nervous to say that to Dan, but what I said to Donna was, you know, before we decided that we were going to do that, I said, you know, if I'm in the city on the weekends, it's going to be very, very difficult for me to not at least drop into the restaurants. And then the chances of something happening when I'm there are probably great. So, you know, getting out of the city is what we have to do. We have to leave the city. And so that's what we did. And the, the restaurant did not fall to pieces. Actually, I would imagine that it was probably better off without me there or, or the two of us there together. And, um, and that was the beginning of boundaries for me. Now, I never work on the weekends. Zero, never, ever, ever. I don't do it. I mean, if it's absolutely necessary, I will get some work done on the weekends, but I do not work on the weekends anymore. It is a, a line that I've drawn in the sand because being a father and a husband is far more important to me, far more important to me than my business. And that is just the truth. If there's investors that are listening to this podcast of mine, I'm sorry. That is the truth. I put my family before my business all day long. And I'm very clear on that boundary. Additionally, I didn't understand that, you know, when I was in the when I was working in restaurants, I would come in at the same time pretty much every day and and when I would leave would just be based on the things that were going on. So there was never like a come in and a like a start time and an end time. There just wasn't. Towards the end, it got better and better, but there wasn't a start time and an end time. Now that I'm running Creatures of Habit and it's a digital brand, it's a very different experience for me in many, many great ways. There's also a bunch of things I miss from the restaurant business. But now, not only do I not work on the weekends unless it's absolutely necessary, but I have a start time and an end time to my day. I literally close my computer at 5.40 every single day. I close it. It does not get opened until early in the morning the following day. That's just the truth. I don't do it. Obviously, I will, I will check emails on my phone. If, if people need me, they can text me or call me. But the computer doesn't get opened back up after I close it at 5.40. And at 6 o'clock, on the dot, I am at my dinner table with my family, having dinner, totally present for my kids or, or as present as I can be and, um, and for my kids and my wife. And that is a, a hard and fast boundary that I've drawn in the world of business. I feel general freedom from doing that. I really do. I feel, I feel absolute freedom. And I don't have to do that. I don't have to close the computer at 540. I don't have to start at the same time every day. I can work every weekend and wear that badge on my shoulder that I'm a grinder and I'm a, I'm a, I, I put the pedal to the metal nonstop. I can do that because I have done that, but I'm here to tell you, it's not healthy. Draw boundaries, draw lines in the sand that are gonna keep you structured, that are gonna keep you focused. Because if you just go and go and go, you are gonna burn out, you are gonna feel exhaustion, you are not gonna be able to put in 100%. That I promise you. Another thing that I wanna talk about boundaries wise is in relationships with family with friends i don't surround myself with people that are not adding value to my life and that doesn't mean that i'm selfish and everybody that's around me needs to add like add something to my life 
That means that there, if there's not a reciprocal relationship where I am super fired up to be of service to and, ex- and see the people around me win, if there's not a reciprocation there, I don't allow those people in, in my life anymore. I just don't. I just don't. And I've had enough experience with trying to impress, giving people chances, trying to get approval, and I don't have to do that anymore. I really don't. I don't have to continually try to impress the people that are playing hard to get with me. And it's been told to me that it is a pattern that I have, I'm so grateful that I've acknowledged, but it's a pattern that I have tried to find people that simulate my father throughout my life. It's not positive. So the self-awareness there of like, is this person, have I put this person who doesn't make me feel good in my life, have I put this person here? Have I consciously put this person here to, to simulate a relationship that I had with my father that maybe I'll get approval from this person because I wanted approval from my father? Wow. I never thought that I did that. I couldn't imagine why would I ever do that, but I did. And now I can see it when it's happening and I've drawn a boundary. Wow. Wow. I ask myself the question, am I creating, am I in this pattern where I have brought somebody into my life, whether it's a friend, whether it's a business partner, whether it's a business colleague, whether it's a competitor, whether it's a, um, just an associate or a, or a, or a, you know, someone that's, that's not necessarily so close, but like I've purposefully subconsciously almost brought this person into my life so that I can get a little feeling of that. And it's unhealthy, and it's really, really not, um, not great. So I've been, I've been self-aware enough at this point after doing a bunch of work on myself to know that that is a pattern, and I draw a quick and hard boundary on that one. I can see it now. I can see it now. So if you're like me, and there are people in your life that are negative, there are people in your life that are bringing you down consistently over and over and over again, but you continue to allow them to stick around. Not only do you allow them to stick around, but you invite them to hang out. But in in actuality, you don't really like them. They bring something to the table that sort of jostles up an emotion that potentially is comforting to you because it was a part of your life in the past. So I I, I, want to share that because this is a new fucking year. This is an opportunity for us to take a real diagnostic on where we're at. Assess the people that are around us because I promise you Positive people are going to bring positivity into your life. Negative people consistently are going to bring negative shit into your life. It is like common sense. So if you're surrounding yourself with people that you don't appreciate or that don't make you feel good, cut them loose right now. Today is the day. Draw the boundary. Don't let them in. You're in a relationship an intimate relationship with someone that doesn't support you, that someone that makes you feel like shit, that someone someone that, that you don't believe loves you, someone that you've lost intimacy with. Think about it. Are they the only pe- person are they the only person in the world that can bring you joy even though you're not happy with them? Draw a boundary. Boundaries are essential for structure in any business, in any relationship, and success and happiness for everyone walking the planet. A lot of people ba- like battle with boundaries. And today is where the battle stops. This is me talking to you about real stuff in my life that I have thought long and hard about that I've done a lot of work on. And I'm here to tell you that without boundaries, we are lost. Imagine, imagine like a, a livestock farm, cattle farm, without fences. They'd never be able to, st- they'd, they'd be out of business. The, the, the cattle, would, the cows would, would just... Wander. That's it. Build the fence. Build the fucking fence. You're struggling with addiction. You're struggling with with something like that. I'm here to tell you. It's about boundaries. You don't need anyone else. I promise you that. God, God can help for sure. Whatever your whatever your your specific you know interpretation of that is, God can definitely help. And if that's energy, great. If that's the universe, great. If that's Jesus Christ, awesome. If that's Allah awesome. If that's Buddha, fantastic. If that's the air and the sun and the the earth and the wind and the water, greatness. Whatever it is, develop that relationship in this new year as well. The relationship with with, um, energy. 
Share this podcast with anybody that you think may need it. I promise you the battle with boundaries does not have to last forever. You could start today. Close the computer, have the conversation, make the commitment to your partner, book the the date night, book the fucking date night. Have it weekly. Have the date night weekly. It's a boundary. We do this. This is what we do. I, I'm passionate about this, obviously. <laughs> uh, very passionate about it. It's given me, and I'm not perfect. Trust me, I'm not perfect. But I'm certainly way better than I was. And I hope that I could rub some of that off on any one of you that don't have the most healthy relationships with boundaries. Last thing I just want to say, because I think it's so important. This would be a great time to get rid of the people in your life that make you feel bad. This would be a great time. Share this podcast with a friend, with a family member, with, with anybody who you think may benefit from it. This is a new year. This is a time for us to really take a look under the hood, see where we're at, make some changes, put the right foot forward. I can't tell you guys how much I appreciate you tuning into this podcast. Really, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I fucking love doing this podcast. I do. I hope I grow this podcast. You know, I mean, obviously I'm inspired by some of the greats, but I just, this is something that I love doing so much. And having people walk up to me at an event on the street and say, hey, I love the Creatures of Habit podcast. Thank you so much for putting out great content. DMing me on Instagram, letting me know how, how powerful it's been for them. It's just everything for me to be able to share this stuff with you guys. So share the podcast. And if you could write a five-star review and, and, uh, and, and give us a five-star rating and write a review, it'll take no time. It could literally just be, I love the Creatures of Habit podcast, done. I love the Creatures of Habit podcast, great podcast. That's it. The, the reviews and the ratings really do help us grow the podcast. So if you, keep, if, you, if you push for me there, I promise you I will continue to create the content that I love creating for you guys. And I hope everybody had an amazing holiday season. This year is going to be the best fucking year of my life. I know it. And I promise you it could be the best one of yours as well. Day to time. Love y'all. Appreciate you. Until the next one. Peace.